And then Imam al-Haddad goes on almost in parentheses in this Qasida to talk about the practice of Ibaha. Ibaha means the heretical belief that when one has achieved a particular spiritual station, one no longer needs the ladder that brought one there and can kick it away. And this is a complete violation of the most basic or soul or principles of Islamic spirituality. The Sharia is as incumbent for those who have reached the end of the past as it is for those who are at the beginning. وَإِنَّ الَّذِي لَا يَتْبَعُ الشَّرَعَ مُطْلَقًا عَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ عَبْدُ نَفْسٍ وَشَهْوَةِ Truly the one who does not follow the Sharia in everything, in every circumstance, is the slave of his nafs, of his ego and of his passion. That's the only alternative. You don't follow Allah's command, you're following your own personal whim and caprice, which is from shaitan. There's no third option. He is the victim of his whims. One should weep for him because he is the one who is truly dead. He is more dead than the one who is merely dead in his body. وَمَا فِي طَرِيقِ الْقَوْمِ بَدْءًا وَلَنْتِهَا مُخَالَفَةٌ لِلشَّرْعِ فَاسْمَعْ وَأَنْصِتِ There is nothing in the way of the people, that is to say the Sufis, at the beginning or at the end, which entails a disobedience to the Sharia. So listen well, pay attention. خَلِّ مَقَامَاتِ الَّذِينَ تَخَبَّطُوا وَلَا تَكُوا إِلَّا مَعْ كِتَابٍ وَسُنَّةِ and cast aside the discourses of those who have stumbled and be only with the book and with the sunnah. And for there is to be found guidance and light and safety from destruction and from bid'ah, which is to be feared and going astray and from fitna, from sedition, temptation. وَمُطْبِعُ حُكْمَ الْكِتَابِ وَسُنَّةٍ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ الْفَائِزُونَ بِجَنَّةِ And those who follow the judgment of the book and the sunnah, they are the harvesters, they are the ones who triumph with the garden. عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَانِ رِضْوَانُهُ الَّذِي هُوَ النِّعْمَةُ الْعُزْمَى وَأَكْبَرُ مِنَّةِ Upon them there is the good pleasure of the Rahman and that is the greatest blessing and the most noble gift. وَمَنْ حَادَ عَنْ عِلْمِ الْكِتَابِ وَسُنَّةٍ فَبَشِّرْهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا بِخِزْيٍ وَذِلَّةِ And whoever deviates from the knowledge of the book and the sunnah give him the news of humiliation and baseness in the world. وَبَشِّرْهُ فِي الْأُقْبَى بِسُكْنَى جَهَنَّمِ وَحِرْمَانِ جَنَّاتِ الْخُلُودِ وَرُؤْيَةِ And give him the news of, in the afterlife, a dwelling place in Jahannam and deprivation of the eternal gardens and of the vision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So two negative consequences of disobeying the kitab and the sunnah which are humiliation in the world. Because وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah ennobles the descendants of Adam. And one of the sources of that takrim is the taklif of the sharia. There's nothing in the sharia that degrades the human creature. On the contrary, because the function of the sharia is to allow us to regain our status as the khulafa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to regain our Adamic dignity and uprightness, everything about it is making us more dignity, more dignified, more serene, more upright, more solemn. The waqar, dignity of the traditional believer, one of the most impressive consequences of the right practice of religion. But that doesn't come about if you disobey and you don't accept the taklif and you follow your own hawa. 
قَدَ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا One who purifies it has triumphed وَقَدَ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا And he who stunts it is thwarted. Two options. There's no third. Follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll become the most dignified person in your community and on the planet to the extent that you are emulating the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Go in the other direction and there's only one other direction. However sophisticated it may appear, however popular it may appear, and that direction is the nafs, which is the domain of the shaitan. And those who follow the shaitan, the shaqawa is evident from their faces, and their baseness, their lack of serenity, the lack of nur. So that is the punishment for disobedience in this world and the punishment in the next world, which is the necessary consequence, which is the reality of which their state in this world was merely a, a hint and an anticipation, is of course to dwell in the state of eternal distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, division, uproar, torment. <coughs> That's the end of that section of Imam al-Haddad's Qasida. Sadly, we won't be able to cover the entire poem.